Honorable Vice President, Chairman of the Rajya Sabha, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Prime Minister, Ministers, and esteemed colleagues of this distinguished house. Actually, I'm as surprised to be here as you are to see me. This is a historic day today. I am proud to be part of this historical moment when a government under the leadership of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji has undertaken to repair the deep-rooted asymmetry and to give an equal share in India's future to all of us women. I am grateful for the honor. I am grateful for the honor you have given me of speaking about my years in Parliament. We are going to a new building, and hopefully this grand edifice will reflect the aspirations of a new Bharat. Today, I have been entrusted with the responsibility of addressing this esteemed assembly as the most senior member, uh, most senior parliamentarian in the Lok Sabha. I entered parliament at the age of 32, nine years after the death of my husband. My debut was as Minister for Environment. Today, 35 years later, I have spent most of my adult life in this institution, and I have seen seven prime ministers and the shaping of grand history. It, it has been an arduous, rocky road. I had several terms as an independent member and finally joined the Bharatiya Janata Party under Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee ji's leadership in 2004. Since then, I have remained a proud member of the BJP as well of this August House. Being a member of parliament is an immense responsibility as it entails safeguarding the trust of lakhs of voters who elect us to be their voice. You are given power, but this power must always be used for their good. The job demands unwavering commitment, moral rectitude, and courage. Basically, it demands great love for your country and infinite kindness towards all. Each one of us gets this opportunity to make a difference, provided we sublimate our own ambitions and see ourselves only as vessels or bridges or protectors of all the beings that need us, the last person in India who believes himself forgotten, people who cannot navigate for themselves and appoint us as their helmsmen. I have tried to make the most of every minute to bring about change wherever I am, whether as environment minister, when many institutions and laws that safeguard us were passed, as social justice minister setting up Alimco, that which now looks after all the disabled in the country, Childline, which was regarded internationally as the best institution for looking after street children, stopping child labor in the carpet industry. You can change things wherever you are. For instance, in the opposition as a BJP member, as chairperson of the often ignored assurances committee, we changed the way people were experimented on by pharmaceutical companies. They were not paid or even asked before becoming guinea pigs. This was changed by us. During Atalji's time, we brought in the vital red and green dot on foods, allowing people to know whether they were eating vegetarian, non-vegetarian food. We repaired an institutional deception by food companies. No service, no job is too small that it should not be taken seriously. My happiest moment was being given the responsibility by the Prime Minister who coined the phrase Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao. Within, within two years, we changed the thought of the country, the entire thought of the country, and the statistics show that it is a lasting change. From 130 women per thousand, a shameful statistic, it rose to 950. Crores of girls were saved. Not only that, it is now seen as a shame and a crime to do away with girl children, whether in the womb or newly born. Now that we are going into a new building, a new phase, I want to tell all the young people here that politics is never fulfilling unless you have a grand passion and a commitment outside it, unless a fire of curiosity burns within you. No service is too small in the service of Mother India. What I have learned is that each constituency is your family. Within my family, there are a million microcosms 
of individual families. Each of them depend on us. We are a part of their lives as they are of ours. I have seen my primary duty to look after each family that has placed itself in my care by electing me, by seeing me as one of their own. In this matter, I wish to say that the Prime Minister has seen beyond people as a statistic and has meticulously seen to the needs of each individual family. Opening, opening bank accounts, giving dignity in the form of toilets, home water taps, building homes for the poor, gas cylinders, giving young people loans, skilling them, protecting them through the largest pandemic in history, seeing that no one remained hungry. Before I end, I would like to tell you a few things that I have learnt in my long journey so far. Never give up. There are times in all our lives where the world sits heavy on our shoulders and there doesn't seem any path ahead. It will take courage, determination and a commitment to something larger than ourselves to forge ahead. Have faith in the goodness of your fellow man. Quieten your mind and soldier on. Believe in yourself. You are an instrument of goodness. If you fight for good, you will always be protected. Use the pain that we all have in our hearts to make yourself a better human being, not to embitter you. Use the pain in your heart to see the pain in the hearts of millions of beings around you and dedicate your life to them. I want to speak to all the women here. The world is still an unequal place and we as women need to be the greatest champions of and for each other. We need to support and protect each other, especially young women across the social spectrum who lead a marginalized existence so that they have the ability to forge their own destinies. There is no greater power in the world than the power of empathy and kindness. And this transforms the life of someone weaker than you. Kindness serves as its own reward. The greatest bank balance that we will ever possess is that of good deeds that we leave in our wake. That is the only legacy that will remain. My faith in God is unwavering. I see him in everyone and everything. I see everything as sacred. I leave you with one thought. We are all part of one divine thread and we are all connected, closer than we can imagine. Let us, irrespective of any differences we may have, wish happiness, protection, and on this holy day of Ganesh Chaturthi, a life free of obstacles for us and all our countrymen. Illuminate the lamp of goodness in our hearts. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.